you know, Chad, see uh, how well you, you remember. They've lost eight times in a row. Do you know what happened the last time they beat the Raiders? If you do, I'll be really impressed. I had to look it up. I didn't know it off the top of my head, but as soon as I saw it, I remembered it instantly. Offhand, I don't. So, yeah, give it to me so I can then find was, the right retrieval cue. It was the end of the season in 2019, and Shelby Harris got knocked backwards. He oh, stuck his right. hand up and knocked down a two-point conversion. That is right. John yes. Gruden walked off the field with a smile on his face. He went for two. The final score was like 16 to 15. Right. Chad, he kind of won both ways. He proved we could have beat them if we wanted to. And we just got ourselves a better draft pick because neither team was going to make the playoffs. It kind of was all right. Right. Be- before that. So you won, but you kind of lost at the same time. Before that was two other losses. So if you if you really want to frame this with the Raiders, really, Chad, really? They've lost to the Raiders 11 straight times. Really. Wow. That's really what's happened. Um, even though you quote unquote won, you cost yourself like three draft spots. So that's what really happened. So I did throw it out to Peyton about the hump. You know, remember he said, it's not yeah, my hump. My hump, right. Yeah. Well, he had a different tone today. No, no, but fair question. I Look, it's a division opponent. This is our first chance to play a division opponent. Last year, we finished three and three in the division. Um, I can't recall a team that has accomplished anything worthwhile you know, finishing 500 in your division. And then you take a team like Las Vegas. There's a long storied history. And certainly I appreciate that, especially with our fans. And so, um, you know, it's our job to play our best football this Sunday and, uh, and, and get ready to play. Yeah, Chad, that's way different than it's not my hump. And uh, I don't, well, now it is part of your hump, isn't it, coach? And now it is. And by the way, this is another moment of like, hey, the guy's been here in Denver for a little bit, Chad. Just understands things a little bit better. Kind of gets where the fans are coming from. He's just a little bit more bonded with the community, I think. Yeah, and I think he respects the, the rivalry, but also respects how the fans feel about the current state of the rivalry. Because the Raiders haven't been good, yet they've owned the Broncos. So... It is your hump, Sean Payton. And you've got to figure out a way to get the Broncos over this hump. Um, And if you were to lose to this team with the disarray swirling around them and the the quarterback situation and the head Mm. coach and all Mm. that other stuff, yeah, that's not going to land very well, Sean Payton. So, yeah, you talked about the importance of it, but it's important to you and your standing with the fans that you guys get this done. Yeah, I think he gets that. I think it's settled in a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I do understand, Chad, the whole like, hey, you can only play the game in front of you. And I get it. The rivalries just aren't the same. Uh, they aren't. Uh, even in division, in, in uh, the NFL as they are in college. I, I'm fine with that. But you have to understand where the fans are coming from. And losing to the Raiders virtually 11 times in a row. And I know there was that. That's there's a caveat because there's the win that the Raiders were happy to lose, but but you really got beat by these guys eleven times in a row. That does not square with this rivalry, man. I mean, this rivalry is much better known for going back and forth, not a one way street. Yeah, they, they. I mean, there's no way, other way to say it than the Raiders own the Broncos, and right. Uh, there have certainly been years in this eleven game quote unquote losing streak where the Broncos were clearly the better team, um, not just in that particular week of the season, but also, uh, you know, for a majority of the season, you, you found ways to, to, to lose to an inferior opponent. I think that's probably one of the more frustrating things. If this were the Chiefs thing, that was frustrating, but it was understandable. Mm-hmm. Hey, the Chiefs are really good. They got a Hall of Fame quarterback. They are who we aspire to be. If we want to win this division, we got to find a way to beat the Chiefs, not this Raiders thing where the Raiders have sucked for the most part. Yet we still can't beat them. 
By the way, Sean Payton's entire press conference from today, as well as Cortland Sutton and Bo Nix, are live and well on our video portion of Kill You With Truth. You can watch it right now or wait for me and Chad to get done talking. But it's there for you to consume. Find out why Sean Payton had to order 42 tickets for this game. Yowza, not great. Another big storyline is the throwback uniforms. That got a lot of attention today, but it's a big weekend, Chad. They're going with the, the throwbacks. They're having um, uh, they're having reunions from some of their best players ever are coming in. Um, you're playing the Raiders. The weather is supposed to be a banger. Um, there's a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is yep. not just a regular game. You're celebrating your past. And that's part of what this week is all about. When you were a player and they had those moments, and that must have been pretty awesome when it happened with the Steelers, what kind of extra energy or juice would it give to the the club that week? Uh, I would say probably not as much as most folks would think. Jack Lambert's not coming in and giving a pregame speech. Okay. Um, You know, uh, Terry Bradshaw is not at the hotel on Saturday night telling us about some Super Bowl victory. You see those guys around the facility, you know, it's the alumni weekend. You, you know there's going to be some special things at halftime. But if you're our, a truly professional football player, mm-hmm. you're going to be prepared no matter who the opponent is, no matter whether it's alumni week or Raiders week or whatever, you're going to be prepared. So I wouldn't say there's a lot of extra juice in the locker room. Extra juice in the stadium, perhaps, but not in the locker room. Well, I think this uniform thing – actually is sort of connecting with the players. I'm so, I'm not a uniform guy. Uh, I am look at me. I'm I'm the least fashionable dude you would ever see in your life. Uh the the fit, the gear, the this, the that, you know, really seriously. But but I'm telling you Chad, being over there today, this was like a hot topic and the players are psyched. Sertan called it dope. Uh Bo Nix was talking about, you know, how cool it was and Cortland Sutton and I'll play it here in a second, was excited about it. Now, this is a two-parter because he talks about the uniforms, and I did wonder, and I asked him the protocol, like if this is a throwback jersey, right? Like we're only wearing these twice. Are you really just passing it out to an opponent like they do, like the whole jersey swap thing? You got to read between the lines here a little bit, and I think I think you can, and we could be on the same page here. But this was a fun interaction. It's a little bit long, but I think it's worth it with Cortland Sutton about the uniforms and who he may be willing to trade a jersey with. I mean, y'all seen them bad boys. Them joint sweets. I can't. I'm looking forward to uh, to Sunday putting the threats on. Um, the helmets already look. No, the helmets are, 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 are some some good eye candy for sure. So um, the threats gonna be nice. Um, looking forward to wearing them, but. I think the thing that's going to be even more exciting and, and it's going to make the moment even more fulfilled is we go out there and, and get a win, you know, a divisional win at that. That's going, to, that's going to make it even just more special of a moment, you know, bringing the throwbacks back, but to get a win, a divisional win at home in them, I think that that, that, that moment is going to be very, very satisfying. How does that work if somebody wants to trade with you? Say it again? Um, with the, I mean, it would have to be a very, like, it, it has to be somebody, you know, it, it would take a very special person on that team to, for me to give them a Broncos jersey and for me to take a Raiders one home. I think I only, <laughs> I think I only have one, and and it, and it was it was definitely something that that you know I was happy that I was able to trade with 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 him, but. Yeah, it's not too many. It's not too many divisional jerseys that gets changed around here. It's like I said, it takes a very special individual for me to take that booger home. It was. I can't tell you. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Chad, it takes a very special player to trade with. Who do you think he's talking about? It's gotta be Devontae, right? It's gotta be Devontae. <laughs> That that's low key pretty funny, don't you think? It, it, it is. It's is that Cortland Sutton? It's it, I gotta give Court a lot of credit on that one. That is a hysterical dig on what the Raiders are going through right now. 
that's pretty damn funny right there. I also like that the fact that he eventually got around to saying that winning the game would make wearing the uniforms more special. <laughs> Clearly, hopefully, yes, that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, but if you got one of them bad boy throwbacks, you know, you're not just handing that around. That's not just your everyday jersey, though, too. I understand you may have to pay for it and all, but you don't, they're only wearing those twice this year. That's it, twice. You're not getting them that often. I thought it was pretty funny when he was talking about, obviously, it's Devontae Adams. When right. the, uh, By the way, Adam Schefter's reporting, and I can read it to you directly. Uh, let's see here. Adam Schefter... Um, uh, I, can't, I guess I can't read it that quickly, but I'll get it to you. Uh, do do Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams is not expected to play Sunday versus the Broncos due to his hamstring injury. <laughs> Max Crosby may go, uh, he may and he's go. not, yeah. he's yeah, but he's not going through the same drama. Um, he, he's really hurt. I, I don't think Devontae, I think that would recover just nicely if the day he gets traded to the Jets or the Saints or wherever he's going to go. Um, I love it, man. I love that the Raiders are going through this crap. They've got significant injuries. Their quarterback situation is a mess. They got a coach. I think Devontae, well, I don't know, man. I'm guessing Devontae Adams is well-liked in that locker room. It's a guess on my part. I don't know it. Um, but, man, Chad, with the throwbacks on with the, you know, the, the, the old timers coming back to honor him with the, uh, the crowd is going to be freaking insane on this one. Chad, come on, man. If you can't beat the Raiders this Sunday, really seriously, what are we talking about here? I think the Broncos are the better team. The Broncos should certainly win this game, but this is the NFL man. And I, oh. I, I, I said you were close to jinxing it yesterday. And now you're ah. that, that same territory here today. Do, do you think the Steelers took the Colts lightly? You know, is Anthony Richardson a quarterback who's got to figure shit out? I watched they that. Not- I watched that game today. By the way, I watched that. I watched the condensed version on NFL Plus. Watched that game. Very interesting game. Very. Yeah, interesting they knocked. Game. They knocked them out the game. Then they weren't ready for Joe Flacco. So who's behind Garner Minshew with the Raiders? Who 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 is it this time? Well, let me tell you. In that game, I'll give you some. I'll give you props on that. You cannot sleep on a team early in the game or you're going to be losing to that team. And that's what happened to the Steelers. You could tell. They, they were just taking things a little bit lightly and they got down 7 nothing, oh fourteen 14 nothing, oh seventeen, 17 like, like that. Right. And, you know, they did crawl back. And Justin Fields, listen, Pickens fumbles inside the 10-yard line or that's a touchdown drive, okay? Um, I don't know what the Colts were thinking. Like, Richardson goes out because he gets hit in the back. They take him out for like what two plays, and then they put him back in, and he gets hit again. He got you know knocked in the head, and it's like why'd you put him back in? That was weird. Um, and Flacco, Chad, I don't know if you like this style of NFL, but this is what the NFL is right now. If you can just because of the way they're playing defense, you can just dink and dunk your way right down the field, bro. You really can. I mean, if you got a line that can protect you for three seconds and you throw enough slants. Because Flacco was in the gun 100% of the time, Chad. I don't think he took one snap under center. Not one. Flacco. Didn't matter. Because it was just dink, dunk, dink, dunk. And, you know, you have these incredible playmakers, Chad, in the NFL. The Broncos don't. But theoretically, you have great playmakers on your team. They just do amazing shit after they catch the ball. It takes patience to go down the field in that way. So it usually takes a veteran quarterback. Young quarter, young quarterbacks yeah, want you press right. down the field. Uh, inexperienced play callers want to press down the field. Uh, the defenses are giving you all that stuff because yep. they want to go with the two high safeties. They want to eliminate explosive plays. They want to eliminate deep passes. So the fact that most offenses just don't take that from the defense and run the ball as well, it blows me away. But again, the Panthers have gotten wins now with their backup quarterback. Andy Dalton. So all this conversation about how easy of a win this should be um, this is this is the NFL, man. Yeah, you're and right. As much, you're right. As much as we think Jacksonville sucks, or mm-hmm. uh, heck, the Dolphins suck. Right. They're going to win some games this year. They're going to beat some good teams at some sure. point along the way because people are going to take them lightly. So uh, I just caution you in your in your uh, you know 
thought that somehow this is going to be an easy one for the Broncos. Well, when I say an easy win, I'm still like predicting a one score game. Listen, Chad, the offense is averaging 15.8, something like that. Now the defense is only given up 13.8, but the Broncos offense, a blowout to me would be 2016 Broncos, Chad. So, you know, I'll, let me let me be clear with what I see a, a dominant Broncos performance. I'm still in the world of reality. And it's the difference about winning these one score games that makes such a big difference in the NFL. Pittsburgh probably wins that game if their center didn't snap the ball into Justin Fields' face when he wasn't looking. They mm-hmm. were marching down the field. And uh, I think they tie that game or even win that game. But Man, I tell you, in the NFL, bro, when you got that second and 15, man, or whatever, second, it's like a death sentence. It is hard to convert those long second and third downs, Chad, in the NFL. College, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But in the NFL, man, the way defenses are playing and the way things are, getting that holding call or that TFL against your sack, holy shit, Chad, that kills teams on drives, kills them. Defenses are too good. and then too good. From a defensive coordinator standpoint, second and 15, are you really going to run the ball? Are you really? No. Nope. Probably not. So then nope. we're going to put our nickel defense on the field. We're going to dial up pressure. And we got you right where we want you. So uh, having success on first down is critical in the NFL. Now, all that being said, to me, this is reason for optimism with Bo Nix. Chad, I I, I think he is uh, the, the nickname Bobot, Bo the Robot. I think applies. I don't know if there's all that much deep going on there, pal. I think it's pretty simple, but I think it's a dude who is a football robot, uh, meaning, you know, processing the information and delivering accurate passes. I don't think there's a lot of creativity, but, but Bo Nix can run with the ball. And when I see what Fields is doing with the Steelers, and he may be the same way, by the way, don't make it overly complicated for Justin Fields either. We're seeing the success of Sam Darnold. We saw Joe Flacco win a game. Boy, Chad, when these guys just keep shit simple and just rely on their playmakers to do awesome stuff, and they can run the ball too because it's still nearly impossible to account for that quarterback, isn't it, as a defender? It's a hard thing to figure out. Uh, Defenses that just aren't built, they're not designed to deal with running quarterbacks. And so this is why these guys are coming out of college and getting drafted as high as they are, despite clearly lacking uh, what we would consider upper-level passing prowess uh, because of their ability to stress a defense, to wear a defense down with their legs. Oh, it's third and 12. You've got the perfect coverage. You bring four guys. One of those guys gets out of their pass rush lane. We squirt out for a first down. Now you want to keep a spy in. Well, now the spy can't deal with short, intermediate passing and crossing routes. Now those open up. So the running quarterback and its effect on the defense is a chess match that ultimately the defense pretty much loses every time. 